In this video, we'll use the following example to illustrate how to obtain multiple linear regression output from StatCrunch. So in this example, the president of a company is interested in predicting the amount of drywall that's going to be sold. And he believes that four variables have some influence on drywall sales. And these are the number of building permits issued in the county, what the five-year mortgage rates are, the vacancy rate in apartments, and the vacancy rate in office buildings. Now his end goal is he would like to develop a model so that he can predict how many sheets of drywall will be sold next month. And he's estimated that 50 building permits will be issued, the five-year mortgage rate is 9%, and the vacancy rates for apartments and office buildings are 3.6% and 14.3% respectively. So if we open up this data set in StatCrunch, you'll see that your data set has five columns in it. The first column contains the number of sheets of drywall sold, and these are in hundreds of sheets. And this is our response variable Y. And the next four columns contain those variables that he believes influences drywall sales. And these four variables are our predictors. Now what we'd like to do is we would like to use regression to develop a model so that he can predict drywall sales. So to do this, with our data set open in StatCrunch, we'll click on the Stat menu followed by Regression, and you'll see that there are several regression options available. In our case, because we have four predictors that we believe influence the response, we need to select multiple linear regression. So in the screen that appears, you need to select the response variable, drywall, as your Y variable, and then click on each one of the four predictors under X variables. And in clicking on these predictors, that's going to pull it from the left-hand box into the right-hand box. So those predictors that are in the gray box will be included in our model. Once you've selected the model to fit, you'll need to click Next several times until the following screen appears. In this screen, you want to check mark residuals and predicted values, and we're going to do that to create the plots that allow us to check the regression assumptions. Now with these two values check marked, you can click Calculate, and the following output will appear. Now, in this output, there's two components that we're going to use. The first is the analysis of variance table. This table is going to test the hypothesis that there's no relationship between the response and the four predictors against an alternative of some relationship. And you'll notice in this table that your p-value is small, so we do come to the conclusion that there is a relationship we're just not sure which of the four predictors are significant in that relationship. To determine that information, we'll look back up at the parameter estimates, and we're going to look through the p-values of the four predictors to determine which makes a significant contribution to the model. Now, you'll notice that intercept is not highlighted because we're not testing the intercept in this case. We're just testing those four predictor variables. So for this case, if we look at these four p-values, you'll notice that only one of the p-values is small, the p-value associated with the number of permits. So in our most appropriate model, we'll only include that predictor to make the ultimate prediction of drywall sales that the contractor was interested in. In order to go back and estimate the quantity he's interested in, I'm going to go to the worksheet and I'm going to add 50 permits in the last line of the worksheet. Now notice that you do not have a value to enter for drywall sales because this is the value that we're going to estimate. And in this case, I did not put in the mortgage rate, the apartment vacancy rate, or the office building vacancy rate, because those turned out to be insignificant predictors. So what I need to do now is I need to edit the output that I had in order to fit the most appropriate model. 
So if you go back to the multiple linear regression output that we just looked at, under options you can select edit and that's going to take you back to the last screen that you were on before you hit calculate. So in this case I'm going to uncheck both residuals and predicted values otherwise we would add more columns to our data set. And because the contractor was interested in drywall sales for one month I need to select that the prediction intervals be calculated. If for instance, he had been interested in the average drywall sales over several months where 50 building permits were issued, then I would want to check mark confidence interval for the mean. So in that case, we're doing a confidence interval, but for our specific example here, we are interested in a prediction interval. Now, at this point, we don't want to click calculate. Instead, I need to click back so that I can modify which predictors are included in the model. So if we click back, I now need to click on each predictor that needs to be taken out of the model. So in this case, I need to take out mortgage, apartment vacancy, and office building vacancy. And you'll notice that the only predictor left in the gray box on the right is the number of permits, which is the only predictor that was significant in this case. With the most appropriate model selected, I can now hit calculate and the following output will appear. And you'll notice that the box that's in yellow now contains estimates for the most appropriate model. So it only includes the predictor number of permits. If you go to the worksheet where the data is contained, it now has two new columns added to it and you'll notice that on the last line of the worksheet where we entered 50 building permits, we now have a 95% prediction interval for the number of drywall sheets that will be sold when 50 building permits are issued. Now the last thing that we're going to consider is we're going to consider how to generate both the residual plot and the QQ plot that allows us to determine if the assumptions are met for the regression model to be valid. So you'll notice that we had two columns added to our data set when we first did multiple linear regression. So we have residuals and predicted values that were added. So if we consider this first row with the full model that included all four predictors, if you were to plug 49 permits, a mortgage rate of 8.35%, and the apartment and office vacancy percentages into that estimated equation, you would have obtained a predicted value of 249.6. But because we collected this data, I know that there were 328 drywall sheets sold, so that's the first value under drywall. And what that results in is it results in a residual of 78.39. So that's the difference between 328 drywall sheets sold and what was predicted. So what I need to do is I need to use the residuals and the predicted values to obtain our two plots. So to obtain the residual plot, under the graphics menu, we'll select scatter plot. Um, our x variable will be predicted values, the y variable will be residuals, and we'll click create graph. In the residual plot that appears, remember that what we're looking for is we want the residuals to cluster about the line y equals zero, and we want those residuals to be evenly spread from this line. Now, in this residual plot, the residuals do seem to cluster about that line, but when you look for the spread of the residuals, you notice two residuals that are quite a bit further in distance from the line y equals zero than any others. So there might be some question in this residual plot as to whether the residuals are evenly spread from that line. If we want to obtain the QQ plot, we need to select graphics and QQ plot. 
and then all you have to do is click the variable that you want to check for normality and in this case we'd like to check to see if the residuals are normal. So once we click residuals we can click create graph and we'll have the following QQ plot. Now remember to determine if the residuals are normal we would like to see a linear pattern or we'd like to see our points follow the line in this QQ plot. And again, remember we had two residuals circled that seemed somewhat problematic in the residual plot. And these same two residuals appear in the QQ plot. So again, with this plot, you might have some question as to whether the residuals are normally distributed. And it's those same two residual values that lead you to question those results. So this is how you're going to do any multiple linear regression analysis in StatCrunch. Um, please let me know if you have any additional questions.